a couple of weeks ago, uh, Arm, uh, you announced the A17. Right, so as some of you may already have read, we announced a product called the Cortex A17. The Cortex A17 is designed for what we think of as a, a very uh, fast uh, increasing market, which is the mid-range smartphone market. We expect over 500 million devices shipping in this mid-range uh, consumer and mobile market in uh, 2015. Uh, as you might also recall, in, in the middle of uh, last year, we launched a product called the Cortex A12, which we expect to come to market this year in end devices, which is also targeting that market. What the Cortex A17 represents is the uh, actual solidification of this market and, in fact, growth of this market and provides a product that will be uh, defining the performance and the feature set for this mid-range market in 2015. So we expect it in devices uh, late, very late this year or realistically in 2015. Now Cortex A17 has a couple of major changes over Cortex A12. The first being the uh, uh, capacity to do big little. So it adds the coherency and the uh, ARM AMBA4 ACE extensions to allow it to do big little with the Cortex A7. Again, the Cortex A17 would be the big part and the Cortex A7 would be the little part. Uh, it also improves the performance over what we announced on the A12 in uh, 2013. Now the question is, what is it with the Cortex A15? The Cortex A15 now has been shipping for the last two years and in fact in 2014 still is the premium product. Uh, and as you might have seen, there are multiple products that have been announced based on the Cortex A15, A7 uh, in various configurations of Big Little that are really broadening this uh, mobile market and consumer market. What Cortex A17 does is actually improves that uh, capability for 2015. So what is different, Cortex A17 is focused on delivering the level of performance required for today's premium 32-bit devices at a much more efficient uh, power and cost level. So performance per milliwatt and performance per square millimeter are what Cortex A17 focuses on. So the performance is uh, definitely higher than A12 and it's also higher than A15? So it's certainly higher than the A12 as we announced it. Uh, you will see in certain mobile type workloads that the A17 actually does better than the A15 as well. And it's a natural progression as you see because by 2015 we do expect the higher end or the premium segment to start going to 64-bit and Cortex A17 slots into the mid-range where the, uh, the Cortex A17 delivers the performance of today's Cortex A15 devices which are premium today but in a smaller footprint, smaller cost per car. And we see this as a very strong market as well because there are over a million apps right now today available in 32-bit. The Cortex A17 provides an efficient solution for this mid-range to fully utilize the software assets that are built into the mobile uh, ecosystem on ARM. So how does the uh, power consumption uh, reduce compared to A15? Uh, I would rather look at it a slightly different way. Uh, we are looking at an efficiency gain of about 25%, but also every time ARM has done something like this, we've always improved our products year over year. If you remember, Cortex A15 was launched in uh, 2010. It has been shipping in, the, uh, in end devices since 2012. And if you look at our history, we keep doing that. So you've seen the Cortex A5, we improved the performance and the efficiency with the Cortex A7. We announced a product called the A53 last year, which you've seen a lot of press about. So we continue doing that. So Cortex A17 actually improves the efficiency by uh, 25 to 30%, uh, improves the footprint by uh, even a slightly larger amount, and gives you the best footprint and cost for that level of performance. So does it optimize things like uh, memory bandwidth, for example? Indeed. So what we actually see is mobile workloads are slightly different than general purpose compute. And if you look at mobile workloads, the Cortex A17 has been tuned to do those mobile workloads well. So things like web browsing, uh, uh, um, app launch, etc. You, you can see that the kinds of capabilities that the Cortex A17 has brought in helping very much with that. So the memory system bandwidth is certainly improved. Uh, the work and the efficiency received through the cache coherent interconnect, CCI 400, that matches the Cortex A17 and A7. That has been improved. Uh, and naturally, we've done a lot of tweaks and tunes to see what we can get out of the Cortex A17 pipeline, which draws a lot of its uh, history effectively from the Cortex A12. So you say the interconnect, is that new? 
no, is upgraded? So the CCI 400 uh, as a product is, uh, is something that we've been shipping since 2011. But we, as we say, we continually do revisions to improve the capabilities, the performance, uh, and the efficiency. So yes, there is a newer version of the CCI 400 that is also aligned with it. But again, it's a very stable, mature product. So the Internet Connect is how the, the data goes from the processor to other parts? Or how does yes, it? so the Interconnect connects the, the processor to other parts, including other processors. For example, in Big Little, it'll connect the big processor cluster with the little processor cluster. Additionally, it'll connect that to graphics, to the memory, and then to the rest of the system. So did you look at the latest versions of Android, for example, and optimize A17 based on that somehow? So uh, it's a yes and no answer. So when we do uh, uh, optimizations on our processors, they have still have to be generic. But naturally, we did take a lot of the standard workloads that we see that we can improve and use them to it. So I think the answer is it's generally improved. But yes, it will also specifically improve for things like Android. Like uh, Android is a, big, is a big part of the market. And maybe there's some ways that they want to save power or get performance and stuff. And you tweak it that way a little bit, maybe. Well, I think it's independent of Android. That's why I was trying to make the point. I think it's more of a what does a mobile workload sound like or look like. And we've opted optimized towards that. So this is equally applicable across all the operating systems, uh, all the types of applications, because most of the characteristics that define them are still similar. So uh, since AE17 comes out a few years after the A15, is it optimized for newer uh, fabrication, newer manufacturing, like smaller? That's a very relevant question. And in fact, that is a, a crux of the issue. So part of what we see for the mid-range market or, and the entry-level markets are they're very, very cost-focused. And effectively, what you're seeing is that you may not move to the next process node as fast because of constraints on cost, maturity, etc. So the Cortex-A17, like all ARM products, is portable, right? So it can be applied to any process technology. But the beauty of it is we are trying to go beyond Moore's law. So the benefits that we talk about in the Cortex-A17 versus the prior generation can be applied at the same process technology. So you're not having to go to a newer technology node to get the performance improvement, to get the area improvement, to get the power improvement. So we expect a lot of the Cortex-A17 parts to actually come out in 28 nanometer for the foreseeable future because it gives them a lower cost base while still giving them the benefits of the power, performance, etc. that the Cortex-A17 delivers. So how, how does it uh, position itself compared to 64-bit? Uh, and there might also be some uh, lower end 64-bit, right? You're absolutely right. So there is a, uh, a natural progression on going from 32 to 64. ARM believes, as it's, you've seen from the products launch over the last two years, Cortex-A12, Cortex-A17, that we think there's a long life still in the 32-bit marketplace, and Cortex-A17 services that. Now, we do at least see the transition to 64-bit uh, coming more from the high end, or the premium products. Uh, as they trickle down to the lower end, you will see that go through as well. You, the obvious question you asked on uh, this Charvax is that why are we seeing so many A53 products, right? Uh, and what does it do versus the A17? So if I were to answer that, I would say when we launched Cortex A53 or the A57 for that matter, we designed them as very, very efficient 32-bit products first and fully capable of doing very efficient 64-bit. So the Cortex A53 parts you see today are going to be very excellent 32-bit processors while uh, delivering a, a serious bump in performance over the Cortex-A7, but they also provide the future proofing so that these platforms out there could actually be upgraded to 64-bit when the OS and the requirements catch up. All right, so uh, looking forward, uh, maybe n not next year, or next year for sure, maybe products. A17. So yes, so uh, Cortex A17, certainly we'll see products in 2015. There will be uh, potentially some partners that will try to accelerate that further. And then Cortex A17, I think, again, has a pretty long life on uh, devices that are not needing 64-bit going forward or for a while. And it provides the most efficient solution for that space for now.